Almost two years ago, I made a video titled Ratchet and Clank's Unsolved Mystery, a video about beating the second visit of Orkson, where you control Ratchet, during the first visit where you're stuck playing as Clank. Despite a bit of time passing since the video, it's still a puzzle that's missing its last piece. The elusive Orkson 2 infobot that speedrunners had been looking to get to leads Ratchet and Clank to the most notoriously cruel tundra. This is Planet Hoven, often considered by speedrunners to be the worst planet in the entire run. Throughout its history, this place has become an absolute burial ground, where promising attempts falter and where runs come to die. Today, we're gonna take a look at how Hoven got its reputation, by looking at how the planet has progressed over time through the history of the game's New Game Plus world records. I hope you enjoy. Let's start off with the basics by looking at the missions. The two bottom ones, Buy Hydro Pack from Ed and Explore Icy Wastes, are optional side missions that are not needed to progress further into the game. This means that our only objective is destroy the Planet Buster. To do so, Ratchet must man a turret that's located at the very top of the level, meaning that Hoven is primarily a vertically focused level. A big ascent to the top, and gunning down a big ship. Sounds simple enough on paper. Let's take a look at how Hoven was completed in the very first Ratchet & Clank speedrun ever performed. A very impressive 11156 segmented any percent run performed by RJ Waters 2 in July 2008. First off, RJ Waters uses a lot of thruster pack long jumps throughout the level to save time on general movement. A corner cut was performed at the beginning of the level to save time having to go around the big building. So already we're off to a good start, as RJ Waters has a keen eye for smaller time saves. He takes out a helicopter by using the blaster, a significantly cheaper option than the Devastator, which the game believes you should need to take him out. He then collects some extra bolts, since this is an any percent run, and he needs to purchase stuff later in the run. RJ Waters does a small corner cut after a wall jump section by jumping straight to the conveyor belt instead of having to go inside the cave. Once a bit further up, RJ Waters has to cross some vertically moving platforms, where falling down would mean that he would have to redo everything. Despite that, RJ Waters tackles it with confidence, skipping the first platform and thrusting on over to the other side. You're now meant to head inside the big hut that's straight ahead of you, but RJ Waters once again does a small shortcut by jumping over to a reachable platform on the left. Although, he does almost die in the process. With the ascent now complete, it's time to fight the Planet Buster, and there are a couple of things to talk about here. First, the ship is separated into five different parts, and to take it down, you need to destroy them all using the turret. Secondly, while you're fighting the ship, you'll be swarmed by a bunch of Blarg Heli Commanders, who will fire a barrage of missiles at you if left on screen for too long. RJ Waters had discovered that it's possible to hit multiple pieces all at once by hitting the ship in specific locations. His strategy was focusing on taking out pieces 1, 2, and 3 all at the same time, while killing the Heli Commanders as soon as he saw them. Afterwards, he finishes the fight by focusing in on pieces 4 and 5, while ignoring the helis, dropping to about a quarter health, but saving some precious time in the process. He thrusts down to the ship and completes Hoven in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Not bad, all things considered. We now have to fast forward a handful of years to 2013. Around this time, Ratchet 1 was seeing a bit of a golden age, as active strategy discussion would take place over on the Speed Demos Archive forums, and runners would begin doing their first speedrun attempts over on Twitch. In this period, Ratchet 1 New Game Plus was popping off, and was starting to garner attention as the main category of not only Ratchet 1, but the entire Ratchet series as a whole. New runners were flocking to the game at a rapid pace, and Hoven would change drastically because of this. Over at the SDA forums, a runner called Klesita would upload a video called Hoven Jump Skip. Alright, I'm gonna show you guys another little Hoven trick I just found out the other day. This demonstrated a shortcut to skip the two cave sections near the top and the moving platforms. Klesita utilized a technique that would become a staple for height exploits through the Ratchet series, the Slope Intercept. When Ratchet glides down onto specific slope surfaces, he crouches for a brief moment upon landing. Normally, he would just slide and fall down, but if you can press X while holding R1 in this small window, a high jump can be achieved with the use of the helipack. SIs can be performed multiple times, which is showcased well in this video, as Klesita performs four in a row to cut out a decent portion of the level. SIs, however, cannot be performed on every sloped surface in the game, so a lot of memorization goes into what you can and can't high jump off. Back when Klesita found this shortcut, it was thought to be just too difficult to perform in full-game speedruns. But SIs certainly had promising potential. 
Another runner on the SDA forums called Infi found a strategy on the Hoven turret fight that involved using the menu in a clever way. In his 4501 from April 2013, Infi pulls out the Rhino before entering the turret. Right before the game is about to transition Ratchet into the turret sequence, Infi pauses the game and plays an in-level movie, a New Game Plus only feature that allows you to view specific cutscenes at will. Upon exiting the menu, Infi is able to control Ratchet and the turret at the same time, meaning that the Rhino could now be used to take down the Heli Commanders without having to move the crosshair away from the Planet Buster. Even though Classita's shortcut wasn't used in this run, Infi still completes Hoven 24 seconds faster than RJ Waters with a 206. Most of the time save came from a slightly better ascent and taking advantage of all the New Game Plus perks, such as not having to collect bolts and the Rhino strat for the turret. The next discovery that was to be made on Hoven would be found by the runner Tyceman. And this discovery is, no joke, one of the most revolutionary innovations made to this entire planet. As Ty stepped foot on the freezing ball of snow, he would forego taking the intended path. Tice instead goes into the side mission path and begins to perform the infamous Hoven SI. This 4053 from June 2013 would showcase Tice scaling the entire mountainside of Hoven with a string of 19 SIs in a row. If Classita's set of 4 SIs was too difficult for the runners before Tice, you can probably imagine the sheer difficulty of this trick. In fact, it was considered the hardest trick in the entire game at the time. I have to reiterate here that you have to memorize every point on the mountain as to where you are and aren't able to high jump. If you land in the wrong spot, you'll slip off the mountain, potentially dying, or you have to glide back down to a backup spot to continue the high jump chain. Tice actually didn't even save time on Infi as he got to the turret 6 seconds slower, but the potential was definitely there. Hoven SI was faster, if you did everything right. And the fact that Tice was willing to go for a trick like this all the way back in 2013, just to save a couple of seconds, is insanity. It was a trick that was way ahead of its time, and Tice Man would get better at it as he did more runs. In his 3846 from July 2013, Tice made significantly less errors scaling the mountain, getting to the turret in 102, 7 seconds faster than Infi's time. But perhaps he forgot to practice the second half of Hoven as well as this run would also end in a 206 Hoven, exactly the same time as Infi. In January of 2014, a runner called Cypress would drop an absolute bombshell of a time save onto Hoven. With his new video, Ratchet & Clank New Hoven SI, slightly faster method, 37. Sippy figured out a method of starting Hoven SI from the front, which saved a massive amount of time meaning that you didn't have to go through the tunnel to enter the side mission path whatsoever. Sippy would go on to set a new world record using this strategy, getting a 3830. Even with a small slip up at the start, Sippy still gets to the turret in 43 seconds, a whole 19 seconds faster than Tice's former record, and finishes the planet in 145. The casual route, even with the shortcuts, was now completely unviable if you wanted to be competitive in the category. If you wanted to be a world record contender, you had to learn Hoven SI. And throughout early 2014, Sippy and another runner known as Nuka would trade the record back and forth many times. Minute barriers were continually broken through the 30s, but Hoven SI continued to be the most nerve-wracking part of the run. Wow. Of course. These days, Sippy and Nuka are two of my closest friends, and every time the Ratchet & Clank soundtrack comes up in conversation, they both show enthusiasm for it, except for the music on Hoven. I think it's a pretty good song, and most people are inclined to agree, but the two simply grinded Hoven SI for so many hours back in those days that it only brings back the terrible memories of having to figure out the trick. Even with all the practice, you'd still see a record or two with a death or some kind of huge mistake to Hoven SI. The trick was just way too skill intensive to be 100% consistent at, but the runners certainly tried. Nuka would improve considerably as a runner through this time, and his 3344 from March 2014 would showcase the cleanest Hoven SI seen yet.
a beautiful 38 turret entry, and a blistering 135 for the whole planet. Now we're getting somewhere. Nuka integrated more subtle optimizations to his gameplay for many of the game's planets. For the turret fight on Hoven, Nuka decided to focus on hitting pieces 4 and 5 first, as it's closer to the crosshair when beginning the fight. Nuka in late 2014 and early 2015 was easily the best Ratchet 1 speedrunner in the world. His movement was way above the competition at the time, and he had many of the game's toughest tricks down to a T. But Nuka was losing ground to some newer runners, not because of his lack of skill, but because of hardware. The PS3 era of Ratchet 1 had arrived. Throughout this video, every run you've seen so far has been on the original PS2 version of the game. But Slaughter and Vortex both started out playing Ratchet 1 on the relatively newish PS3 port. This version in particular featured much faster loading times in multiple spots. There were now faster loads for planet transitions, cutscenes, in-level movies, and more, causing the world record to go down even further. The overall time save back then was roughly 3 minutes throughout an entire New Game Plus run. Gameplay-wise, most of the time save from using the PS3 version came in the form of the PDA. The PDA is a gadget normally used to purchase ammo remotely at a higher price but it was discovered that it's possible to achieve a grounded state out of the gadget by holding L1 while the shop menu is open. The L1 button activates the first-person view feature, and because the game now thinks Ratchet is on the ground, a high jump can't be performed as you're closing the PDA. This can be repeated over and over again. The infinite jump, as it would be coined, saw better utilization on the PS3 version. On PS2, you have to wait for the vendor salesman to load in before being able to close the PDA again and he shows up at seemingly random 1-3 to three second intervals, which can throw off your rhythm. As more infinite jumps were being found throughout this time, the PS3 version would slowly obsolete the painfully slow PS2 version, as the PDA could be closed almost immediately after opening it. A runner named Orch discovered that infinite jumping could now be used to cut out a few SIs out of Hoven SI, saving a few seconds overall. While Nuka was incorporating this into his runs, he wouldn't really get any time save out of it because he was playing on inferior hardware. Slaughter would get a 37 second ascent using Orch's infinite jump strat at the start. He even tried to cut out an extra SI at the top, pushing the trick to further optimization. Despite missing it once, this is still the fastest Hoven SI we've seen so far. This run also has the amazing YouTube description of world record, 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 world record. Now I need to talk about Vortex, one of the most homey ratchet runners out there. But, dude, this guy was streaming on his Mac with a webcam pointed at his TV for the majority of his early speedrunning career. You think you've seen bad quality before? Brace yourself. I'm gonna YOLO it during the run. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Upon Vortex's rise in 2015, he would frequently do races with Nuka despite the two not really being on an even playing field. Nuka was even kind enough to time Vortex's runs for him, since his computer was literally that shitty at the time. Look at this dude. At first, Vortex struggled a ton with Hoven. His 3058 died on Hoven. His 3054 died on Hoven. And his 2955 had two accidental backflips near the top. All of the runs I just mentioned were former world records. Even the world's first sub-30 was set in this quality, and still had issues doing Hoven smoothly. His 3005, which was the run before his sub-30, actually had a pretty decent Hoven ascent, getting to the top in 32 seconds, the fastest ever by 5 seconds. Vortex didn't quite get a grip on how to do the Rhino in level movie strat, so he would often lose time from failing it, resulting in generally slow times for the full planet. In this console transitional era, Nuka was still willing to push PS2 as far as he could, and was pulling out better Hoven times than Vortex and Slaughter despite being at a disadvantage. His Hoven SI was practiced, and his turret fight was always quick too. It's an interesting piece of Ratchet & Clank speedrunning lore, where the best runner simply did not have the best version, but was almost able to negate the disadvantage because of his superior movement and overall consistency. His 3028 is still today seen as a legendary mark for what he was able to accomplish on PS2. It would literally take an entire year for anyone to achieve a low 27 minute time on PS3, which is about what his PS2 run equates to. I could almost dedicate this entire part of Ratchet Speedrunning to its own separate video, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to Hoven. Every runner at this point in time had spent tens of hours learning and practicing Hoven SI, the most brutal and unforgiving trick in the entire game. But as 2015 would come around, a huge discovery would be made to the core movement system 
of Ratchet and Clank. The movement in Rack 1 around this time largely consisted of neutral long jumps and neutral canceled side flips. By keeping the analog stick in the neutral position of the controller, you can progressively gain speed and get through levels very quickly. Around Christmas of 2014, Nuka discovered that these two moves could be done in a short burst on Planet Umbris, by walking off the very edge of this platform, creating a tiny jitter of sorts. On one magical attempt, Nuka began soaring through the level. And this was more than just a small jitter. The infinite long jump had just been discovered, and this is how it works. If you run off the very edge of a platform and there's mud straight beneath Ratchet, then mash long jump and side flip in a rhythm, Ratchet can effectively fly for a short period of time, as the game assumes him to be in a grounded state. Once Ratchet isn't over the mud anymore, the infinite long jumps drop, but a ton of speed can be built, allowing you to continue your movement strings at high velocity. It can even be preserved into a glide by opening the PDA. ILJs, as they would be called, would be found to be possible on more planets than just Umbris. It was discovered to be possible on Rilgar's Water, the mud on Vilden 2, the acid on Quartu, and also the icy waters of Hoven. Unfortunately, ILJs was mostly a trick to cover long distances, and with Hoven being a vertical planet, the discovery didn't seem to have any obvious implications. Slaughter, however, had found a similar technique with the thruster pack on Iridius Mud all the way back in 2013. Seeking a personal goal to complete Iridius Swingshot Fortress without the Swingshot, he was able to clear the final room by continually side flipping to gain height. This worked pretty much the exact same way as ILJ's, as all you had to do was jump over the very edge of a platform with a surface beneath you that you can ILJ off of, then begin side flipping by holding R1, then pressing left X, right X, left X, and so on. Now this was useful on Hoven, and the technique would be coined infinite side flips. Nuka and Slaughter would begin doing speedrun attempts with infinite side flips on Hoven. Now, there was no need to scale the mountainside of this snowy planet anymore. Hoven SI had been obsoleted. This was actually a good thing. In fact, it was probably the best state Hoven had ever been in. Infinite side flips were easy to perform, and if you were good at the turret fight, the planet was all of a sudden not that bad anymore. You could even swag out with tricks like these. The most tedious and annoying planet was a breeze to get through for the first time in the game's history. The fastest ever Hoven with the old Hoven SI was 135. Now that the planet had been made more consistent, faster, and easier, Hoven was dropping below 120 on the regular, with Nuka getting a 117 on his final PS2 run. For the rest of 2015, nothing new would be discovered on Hoven, but this didn't mean that the game wasn't being played. Vortex, Slaughter, and another player, Raikaru, would slowly chip away at the record, but a new player would begin tearing through the game once 2016 rolled around. And that player was me. I saw Ratchet 1's world record hovering around the 28 minute area, and I knew that in reality, a low 27 or lower should easily be attainable, since Nuka's 3028 was at least at a bare minimum at a 3 minute disadvantage. Nuka's run, despite being a year old by 2016, was still the best display of Ratchet 1's movement, so I attempted to emulate his playstyle, and in the process, pushed the game to new heights. After a couple of world record trades between myself and Slaughter, I would carve my own path and lower the record many times. With the discovery of some new Walloper speed tech, I would bring the time down to the first ever 23 minute time. Despite all the records, Hoven was nearly devoid of progression, except for a small time saver after the turret fight. The swaggy side flip movement that Slaughter did back in the day proved to be useful after all. After doing infinite side flips at the start, I would swap to the helipack in the menu before playing the in-level movie. This allowed me to do a short infinite long jump back to the ship to save a couple of seconds over using the thruster. In a fitting conclusion to my grind around this time, I would get a best segment for Hoven on my 23, with a 17 second ascent and a 112 for the full planet. At the start of 2017, nobody was pushing the record much since I'd left the game. But Scaff was about to change all of that, who would go on to dominate during this year. Throughout all of 2017, Scaff would set 9 world records in a row, with some new discoveries on Hoven. A runner called Cinna had discovered that it's possible to infinite side flip from an earlier point in the level, practically right in front of the initial spawn position, skipping the detour on the right, and allowing you to get to the turret fight in 10 seconds. 
This infinite side flip is actually deceptively more difficult than the other one, since the edge you have to jump off is completely obscured by the snow. If you jump too early, you'll fall down hovering with the thruster pack and wiggling from side to side. Honestly, a pretty funny looking mistake. You can save this by doing an infinite jump back to the ledge, but Ratchet 1 New Game Plus has always been very optimized, so every second you lose really matters, especially at this point in the game's history. That wouldn't be the only discovery, however, as an interesting find regarding the Hoven turret would take place. It turns out that the game never checks for Ratchet's Y coordinate upon entering the turret. This means it's possible to hit the trigger and start the fight early, as long as you're straight under the turret and Ratchet is in a grounded state such as being in an ILJ or an infinite side flip. The downside is that you won't be able to do the in-level movie Rhino Strat to take out the Heli Commanders, but on paper, this strat saved around 7 seconds. Scaff decided to give the strat a whirl and runs, opting to PDA glide into the trigger as ILJs are extremely difficult to control. Also, the trigger is deceptively thin, so it's not easy to hit every time. To Scaff's surprise, he started saving time using the strat. For years, the Rhino in-level movie strat had been used to save time over not having to move the crosshair away from the Planet Buster. What most runners in the past didn't realize though, is that every Heli Commander that spawns flies in a set path every time. And most of these set paths actually fly directly in front of your crosshair, if you follow Nuka's strat of doing pieces 4 and 5 first. In Scaf's 2142, which is the run where this was first implemented, you can see him only moving the crosshair away a couple of times to take out the helis, and when he does, he flicks over quickly and readjusts back. And yes, we are now entering the sub 1 minute era of Hoven. A 7 second turret entry, and 57 for the full planet. Scaf's final 3 records in 2017 would all feature a strange phenomenon on the turret where the planet buster is way higher than normal. This is currently not understood, but it might have to do something with entering the turret as the ship is bobbing upwards in its idle animation. This can randomly lose you time as you now have to swing the crosshair around more to hit the heli commanders. Hoven was definitely starting to become annoying again. At the end of 2017, Scaff took a leave from the game, and I would be the one to run off with the baton as I returned to the game to prepare for an upcoming showing at Games Done Quick. I would lower the record continually at the start of 2018, until I landed a 2042 in February. I decided to take March off to recharge the battery in hopes of maybe making a push for the elusive sub-20. I even made a video outlining what potential strategies I could incorporate to possibly achieve the milestone. The most intriguing strategy of the bunch was a turret fight strat on Hoven, discovered by does this username. User decided to closely inspect the health of the Planet Buster and how dealing damage to it actually worked. He figured out that each point on the ship has 10 health, and each turret shot deals 0.2. However, User was thrown off by the fact that some of his shots were randomly dealing 5 times the amount of damage than usual. After further examination, he found out that the topmost bits of the ship have some incredibly small sweet spots, where the 5 times damage can be achieved. I'll just refer to them as critical hits. These spots are insanely small, and because the Planet Buster bobs up and down, it's pretty much impossible to consistently obliterate its health bar. In April 2018, I announced the Month of Rack, a project where I would play Ratchet 1 New Game Plus every day in April in hopes of achieving the sub-20. I started incorporating the new ship fight into runs, and the order in which you shoot the Planet Buster parts was now a bit different due to the new sweet spots I was aiming to hit. Let's take a look at my 2032 set on April 4th. Okay, pray everyone. Hoven. I begin the fight the same as always, focusing on parts 4 and 5, but I aim for the top middle of the two pieces and pray I get some nice critical hits. I only aim away very briefly to take care of the helis too. To get more critical hits, I then swap to hitting only 1 and 2 at the same time. Different runners have different setups for this part, but I prefer to aim for the invisible space between the two turrets. It usually nets me a few critical hits. You can sorta of tell if you get it or not by looking at how quickly the ship bursts into flames. After destroying parts 1 and 2, Part 3 is one of the main reasons why so many runners absolutely dread this planet. Getting the critical hits on this happens when the game feels like it. Now of course you're watching a world record, so it goes pretty well for me here. But the amount of runs that straight up die to this part is absurd. The helis are just scattered all over the place, and killing them is extremely slow. So the best thing you can do is just aim for the turret and pray you get enough critical hits before they kill you. I have a comparison video, France, if you want to watch it. It's on my YouTube. For like all the different strats you can do there. 
I love it when this ship just doesn't break for no reason. Am I really going to die here? That is absurd. Can somebody clip that, please? Because that's maybe the worst RNG Hoven I've ever seen in my life. Break, please. Please break. Please break. Fuck this planet, dude. We must... Wow. This planet blows ass. It do! Also, if you somehow get the high ship glitch, your run is completely over because now you can't even reach the top part of the ship with your shots. Take a look at this clip from Runner Sneepy about how stupid it can get. <laughs> Yo, this is what we want. Yo, I've never seen it that high. Hoven had now entered a lottery stage. All the strats prior, while tedious, at least relied on your ability to execute whatever was necessary. Now, a lot of that is stripped away with stuff that is completely out of your control. Not only is the turret fight pretty much random, hitting the trigger to enter the fight can also just not work for whatever reason, leading us to believe that the Hoven turret trigger is alive and is moving around at will. Despite how bad Hoven was now, I wasn't deterred. I had a goal I wanted to achieve, and I couldn't take my mind off of it. Throughout April, not only would I achieve the sub-20, I would bring the time down to 1934, one of my proudest speedruns of all time. Some of the Hovens I would achieve during this would be completely ridiculous, with my 1934 completing the planet in 46 seconds, even with a scuffed side flip at the very end. I would also begin to ILJ directly into the turret trigger without using the PDA, causing my ascent times to hover in the 4-5 to five second range, which is completely crazy when you look back a couple of years. The different iterations of Hoven SI all took between roughly 110 and 37. Now you can reach the turret in absolutely no time at all. Granted, you hit the damn trigger. There hasn't really been much improvement to Hoven since my grind back in 2018. But Franz Core has pushed the game to incredible heights, with the game entering the 18 minute barrier in 2020. His 1845 from 2021 has an unbelievable 41 second Hoven. On the Ratchet and Clank Community Gold Sheet, Franz has also achieved the world's fastest Hoven at 55.65, or in the context of the timing we've used for this video, 40 seconds. In my 1850, I tried to use what's known as wiggle strats, where it's believed you can achieve more critical hits by wiggling the crosshair back and forth towards the planet buster. It's probably placebo, and not every runner does it. And that's kind of where we're sitting right now. At the moment, Hoven is in a really bad spot. Hitting the ILJ into the trigger is very precise, and getting a fast turret fight is effectively pseudo-randomness. If you want a top time in this category, you need to refine your movement to a T and get lucky on Hoven. But man, if the journey to get here wasn't diverse, we went from going the casual way with a couple of shortcuts, to the Rhino Strat on the turret, to Tice's Hoven SI, to Hoven SI from the front, to infinite side flips, to infinite long jumps, and to the ridiculous ship fight that we know and don't love today. Currently, the only way Hoven could be optimized any further is finding a way to destroy the Planet Buster in a quicker manner. Ratchet's weapons deal absolute chip damage to the ship, so the only way to damage it significantly is with the use of the turret. Right now, there's no viable path to skipping the fight, but who knows what the future holds. If there's anything positive to take away from this whole thing, it's that Hoven, while a terrible luck fest, still retains a ton of intrigue amongst viewers. It's a planet that gets people invested hoping for that miracle turret fight where all the parts just break insanely fast. If the Ratchet 1 New Game Plus run was easy, we'd have nothing to get excited about. Speedrunning sometimes needs these kind of roadblocks to make you feel like you're really fighting for the goal you're trying to achieve. But I think I speak for the majority of the community here when I say that Hoven has always been frowned upon. It's a planet nobody likes, but you gotta get through it. So to Hoven I say, screw you, but damn if your record history wasn't sick. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon. Take care, and have a good one.